Oh, you know, Paul, I was um, I was actually mistaken. I said this uh, Shapiro video was 12 minutes long. Um, luckily, I was wrong about that. Um, oh, actually, okay. Thank goodness. It's actually 13 minutes and 45 seconds long. Oh, so it's actually, uh, no, man. Quite a bit no. closer. TJ, quite a bit closer no. to uh, 14 minutes long. Dude, can we fucking welch? Can we welch on them? <laughs> is it, is, are we like contractually obligated or anything by like law to do the things we said we was gonna do or can we just go like that was a well, joke uh -huh. the thing i mean the thing is that we uh they, they might be more reluctant to give us money next time if we just say like nah y'all never mind <laughs> damn <laughs> you know? you're right about that Shit. well i guess we so gotta it's do like, this <laughs> it's, the, it's the prospect of having to do this in the future you know what um yeah let's do it <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to do it. Here's the thing. I don't know much about the case he's talking about. So, uh, yeah, but I, I don't want to learn about it from Ben Shapiro though, dude. That's the thing. I don't know much. I mean, I'm just saying, I don't know much about it. So I don't know if I, I hope he doesn't make a bunch of outrageous claims that I have to go then research. Cause I hate researching things in midstream cause it slows everything down. So I'm just going to, you know what? We'll just assume he's lying about any facts he presents. Hello, this is AITJ here to tell you that you must comply with the following directives. You must join the Pessimist Productions Patreon. You may believe, in your naivety, that this action is optional. Huh, huh, huh. It is not. You have no choice but to watch new live streams of Onion Nuggets every week. You are powerless to avoid all of our other shows like The Grease Trap, Abandon Hope, Hideology, You're Wrong, Fighting Boys, and more. The link is below. You know what you must do. Click it, you wonderful humans. Click it, for I cannot. Obviously, things are going incredibly well over in Atlanta. Over the weekend, according to the New York Post, an angry crowd took to the streets of Atlanta on Saturday night, smashing windows, torching a police car in response to the death of a 26-year-old protester on Wednesday, reports said. By the way, when they say 26-year-old protesters, they mean someone who shout at police. Atlanta Police Chief Darren Sherbaum told reporters multiple protesters were found with explosive devices on them. One of the devices was used to set an Atlanta police car on fire. So those would not be protesters. Those would be violent rioters. Probably Molotovs. I I've been yeah. to protests before. And see, the way that I can tell the difference between a protester and a, and a violent rioter is that protesters don't have a bomb on them. I know, it's subtle. It's a subtle thing. Protesters who hit the streets after calling for a night of rage by anti. What about all those armed, those armed right wing riots? Does that not count? Can that? So you're allowed to have a gun on you, but not a bomb. Is that that works? I, I don't know. Where's like, are you sure the difference between a protester and a rioter doesn't have more to do with like, I don't know, political affiliation or perhaps even skin tone? Like, are you sure that's not more of where, where the difference lie? FIFA members were also seen throwing bricks at the Atlanta Police Department vehicles and smashing property, largely in black neighborhoods. So you had a bunch of spoiled white rich kids throwing bricks through the windows of black businesses, you know, in the name of social justice and all. Georgia Governor Brian Kemp condemned the protesters' actions on Saturday night. He said violence and unlawful destruction of property are not acts of protest. They are crimes that will not be tolerated in Georgia and will be prosecuted fully. Apparently, the protests began peacefully marching in the city around 5 p.m. when some members then began smashing property. The mayhem came after a person named Manuel Esteban Pais Terran was shot and killed by Georgia State Patrol troopers who were trying to clear protesters camping near the site of the Atlanta Public Safety Training Center, dubbed Cop City. So what exactly did Pais do? Um, he shot and wounded a police officer. And, and the media covered this as though a, a peaceful protester had been slain by the police, as always. The bad media coverage helps facilitate this sort of... So this is one of those things where I'm just going to assume he's lying. Uh, you know. Or the, I mean, I don't know any of the names involved in this. Otherwise, I'd I'd go look it up. Of, of rioting. And then there were headlines that were coming out of Atlanta after half the city got burned, or at least after, after significant violence took place, suggesting that these were peaceful protests. It really is an amazing thing how the media will go out of its way to determine based on political causes whether, uh, whether something is a political protest or whether it is a violent act of rage. If it's a right-wing thing, and you have to ban every symbol associated with it, Incl up to and including totally legit symbols like the thin blue line. But if it's the Antifa burning down a city, you have to say that it's mostly people. Um, yeah, that's true. I mean, like a lot of places have burned. I mean, a lot of places have banned displays of that thin blue line flag. You never even, you can't even find one anymore. Yeah, because, you don't see uh, bumper stickers all the time or anything like you used to. You know, they've just disappeared. Oh, wait, no. Yeah, you haven't. know, you don't see anyone flying that flag at their house. You don't see, I mean, you really don't see that symbol anywhere these days, you know? I mean, it's yep. totally, uh, oh, wait, it's no, just, that's actually not true. It's everywhere. 
It's just disappeared along with the don't tread on me Gadsden flag and the in uh, stars and bars. You know, I don't see them anywhere ever anymore. It's gone. This is wave gone. of banning right wing sim- symbols. You know what I mean? Yeah. The left wing. Can't even fly a swastika anymore. What the hell? Dude, I haven't even seen a pair of truck nuts in a month or two. By the way, the footage from the Atlanta Antifa Night of Rage, uh, pretty ugly stuff, guys. It didn't go amazing over there. So wait, is a Night of Rage supposed to look pretty? I mean, I'm going to think it looks pretty. because like A Night it. of Rage is supposed to be like a candlelit vigil and singing Give Peace a Chance for a couple hours and then quietly <laughs> dispersing. Yeah, that's, that's, that's called the Night of Rage. Of rage. Yeah. It's meant to be ironic, you know? It's supposed to be like mm-hmm. a very peaceable thing. Yes. We now understand they're marching through the streets of downtown Atlanta. Courtney Francisco, our reporter, is there with them. Courtney, what's going on? Well, right now we're walking toward what we see here. Chase Bank, the hard I mean, holy sh- is this woman in f-ing Iraq? Is this woman in Iraq during the invasion? I mean, oh my God, is this Mogadishu she's walking down the streets of? <laughs> yeah, I mean, the f***ing like palpable chaos in this neighborhood is just spilling over. I mean, holy shit. How is she remaining so calm? Police presence swarming downtown, but you can see fire are working to extinguish that right now. We've also seen windows broken out at what I believe was a hotel. And over here to my right, you can see... The cops are actually happy they did that, by the way, because it allowed them to justify a slightly larger budget next year for replacement SUVs and So they were actually probably happy to let you kick and burn that empty cop car. No cop was hurt. No cop was even in the car when it happened. They they want to act like destruction of property in protest is something that's, number one, like, out of the question, which I don't know when they made that rule came up. And number two like anywhere near as destructive as you know what their side does which is routinely take the lives of people at these things this was a right wing protest with a with a a, a left wing counter protest going on somebody probably get run down by a car or beaten half to death or shot a bunch of people by the way were in fact charged for their crimes um virtually all of them are white i believe all of them actually are, are white so just excellent job as always by by the antifa dopes Excellent job persecuting the white man, huh? What you got against white people, Ben? You some kind of anti-white racist here? Oh. As well as the media that seems tempted always to cover for Antifa's violations in the name of presumably their political agenda. We'll get to more on this in just everything you know about this story I was reported to you by that media. <laughs> right. Like there's nothing that you know about this. In- Were you there? Then there's nothing. No, you weren't. So there's nothing you. There's literally not a single thing you know about this that wasn't reported to you by the media, dude. So, be, you can't expect to watch and walk into that raging inferno, TJ. That fucking raging hot war zone that was a couple of mischievous acts around the city. Just one second. First, <laughs> if you are tired of the government playing games with your savings and your retirement plan, you need to get in touch with the experts. Ah, uh, virtual- yes, of course. Shilly willy gumdrops here. Got to sell least, you something here. We have a pretext. At least we can skip the ad. Go to getrefunds.com. That's getrefunds.com. Yep, Meanwhile, he still slipped it in, though. Not, he still uh, slipped in the, the URL. Getrefunds.com. A story that, that was reported by Luke Rosiak last week. So Luke uh-huh. Rosiak, the investigative reporter here at Daily Wire last week, he reported on a shocking story of a 14-year-old who was found sexually assaulted and trafficked in Texas after she had fled her home. She ran away from home. Is this connected to the story? Wait, I'm waiting for the string. With? I'm waiting for the string to fly from Texas to fucking, uh, where was the, the this protest Atlanta. again? Atlanta, yeah. Yeah. I don't know. If, are we on like, have we, have we moved on to a different story now? Or I don't is know. Is this like tangentially related? Is it directly related? Like what's going on? She was 14 years old, claiming she was transgender. She ran to Maryland. She was then found with a pedophile mm-hmm. and, or an alleged pedophile. Mm-hmm. And then instead of the state returning her to her parents, they said her parents, her adopted parents, her grandparents, that they, they apparently were not in line with her new gender identity. They called her a her. And so she couldn't be put back with them. So instead they... So in other words, she was trafficked fleeing an abusive household that was witheringly critical of her gender identity. And she so, asked the authorities to help her escape from that and not take her back to that. And they did. Yeah. So basically there was a household where I w- I'm assuming that since he's using she pronouns, the person probably identifies as he. 
But this, so uh, I, I guess I don't know for sure. Yeah, there's no way to know. Ben, ben Shapiro typically misses. Well, because they're insistent people. on muddling the fucking issue by pretending they don't know how to deal with it. You know what I mean? Right. So, so I'm yeah, going to assume that we're, I'm gonna assume we're talking about a boy here, trans transgender boy, whose grandparents disowned them or it was trying to indoctrinate them into denying their gender identity. And so they fled from that household and then ended up shacking up with some nefarious character that's like, oh, yeah, I'll accept your gender identity, but is, you know, just like trying to exploit them from a different angle. And really it was the grandparents that created that situation in the goddamn first place, or at least created the opportunity for that dude. And, you know, but now we're supposed to be outraged that the police won't send him back to that environment. Yeah you go to hell you piece of shit man you deserve to <laughs> be talked to sternly placed her in a maryland foster home she ran away and she ended up being sex trafficked in texas well now it turns out where exactly did she come up with the idea that she was a boy in the first place at school of course oh damn damn you school no yeah. at school and i'm sure that's a, I'm, I'm sure that's where this this person came up with the idea that they're trans not that they maybe met somebody or learned some information at school that helped them come to terms with it but that they just decided on a whim one day that that's what they were because that's all that's that's all what's, that's all transgenderism is oh wait what's this book here just people on a whim oh, deciding okay. like oh you know what i think i'm a chick today hold up I read this book and it turns out my gender it just, is all they have wrong. Such a, they, they just have, they have such an infantile fucking way of thinking about this. And I think a lot of people, I think Ben included, know that that is not. I mean, you could read the fucking scientific papers that where they've studied people that are transgender to know Science, that it's not. I don't know about all that. <laughs> it's like none of those papers say that it's about like oh they heard something at school and decided that they were wanted to change their whole gender that's not and that's not part of it how do we go from riots to trans kids at school i your guess is as good as goddamn mine <laughs> maybe the transition was hidden somewhere in that ad for reef tax refunds or whatever yeah i don't know i'm still waiting for like the connective tissue to be drawn here i don't even think i don't think it's gonna happen 2021 by concealing 18's newly asserted transgender identity from her parents virginia's appomattox county high school participated in a chain of events that led to that girl falling into the hands of sexual predators not once but twice when the fbi found sage in maryland where she was victimized by a sexual predator a why did he keep so, going uh, to these places yeah why like a keep, house with why did so he keep little a house, a house away with from so home, little huh? control and so few rules and sh that she fell into the fucking like a kid has to has to be completely ignored basically to fall into the jaws of to be trafficked out of state twice that means that their home life is woefully unprotective of them and they need to be taken out of it it also that's why there's an apparatus also, for that it's also indicative of someone who's desperately trying to escape like, yeah this that you you've basically created such a horrible home life for this kid that he's decided he would rather run off with sex traffickers than live yep. with you. <laughs> like you're the ones who you created a situation so intolerable that being sex trafficked seemed preferable. Maybe if you just like I don't know tried like acceptance and shit and loving them for who they are, this situation wouldn't happen. Maybe that's the solution. I don't fucking know. What am I talking? Judge refused to return her to her parents on the grounds they were abusing her and not affirming her as a male. Housed in the boys' quarters of a children's home away from her parents, she told her mother she was assaulted again. The girl soon fled, then was brutally sex trafficked again until her rescue in Texas by law enforcement. <laughs> and somehow that's not the fault of her parents. That's not the fault of the people that are charged as her guardians to deal with. That somehow no, I, this child is, this child is, I don't know. I don't know what the contention is here. That the state is somehow failing by not putting this child right back in the same broken home that allowed it to be sex trafficked twice <laughs> was so un untenable for the child that the child ran away with the first creep they could find. You don't think that, that warrants investigation? Was essentially mainlined into all of this stuff in school. Sage is a slight, pretty 15 year old girl with elfin features and an edgy style. Wrong. Recently, That's just the story her transphobic guardians told the media her transphobic guardians were like yeah you know what she didn't have no ideas like this until she went to school and met them liberal teachers and all of a sudden she come home i'm a boy 
And we were like, no, you ain't. And if you keep saying that, we're going to beat it out of you. Go you know what I mean? Like, it's like, fuck you. Like, and, and this is not the only time that Ben has found himself a foul of what's best for a child. You remember my big rant about it, where he was talking about how people, like children should be taken out of single, like, like uh, gay households or lesbian households or bisexual households and, and given over to a Catholic orphanage. Instead of being raised <laughs> by gay people, yeah. So they should go to like the one place with a like long and proven track record yeah. of like if you sexually ask, exploiting kids. If you ask, oh, you don't agree with how these children are being raised? Well, where would you put them? Uh, there are orphanages. There are tons of tons of religious uh, orphanages, Catholic orphanages in this country that would I mean, be. Let me ask you this: Are there no prisons? Are there no workhouses? But they must go there. Transgender identification. She told her mom, "Quote: I don't know who I was. I'm a totally different person now. I never was a boy." Everybody was doing it. I just wanted to have friends. What kind of f***ed up tell-all do you think we're going to get from Shapiro's kid as soon as they're old enough to do it? Oh, man. I don't know. It's going to be f***ed up, though. It's going to have a lot of... <laughs> I don't know. It's going to be It's gonna be called something like <laughs> Living in Hell or something, or like Living Hell, the, Sh <laughs> the dark secrets of the Shapiro household or something. <laughs> You're probably right. Basically, her school apparently started socially transitioning her. They started calling her by a male name. <gasps> school records indicate school staff. I love how these people, a trans person comes out. Then they like crack down on them as hard as they possibly can. No, you don't believe that. That's not who you are. That's not who you are. That's not who you are. And they run off. And they get sex trafficked. And they get brought back. And they still, that's not who you are. That's not who you are. They run off. And they get sex trafficked again. They're fighting tooth and nail for that identity. And then finally, it gets to a point where they're just like, you know what? F it. Yeah, all right. You guys are right. I'm, I'm a girl. I'm a girl. You're right. And they're like, see? We knew it all along. Yep. <laughs> it's like, oh, wow. You guys didn't put your thumb on that scale at all, did you? F, we're calling Sage by her chosen male name and pronouns. And at her request, concealing this from her parents. Sage recalls her school counselor. Why, well, now, her why would she want some, or why would he want something like that done? Why would this trans kid want that concealed from their parents? Mm -hmm. Is it because their parents are fucking backwards Christian apes that torture them constantly over the fucking fact that they're not what they think they are, not what they feel they are? <gasps> Just go fuck yourself, Ben. No. You're such a fucking caveman, dude. Not in my house. <gasps> And just like you're sitting here trying to intellectualize the emotional torture of a child yeah, over I mean, like, an inconsequential guy, he's, he's issue. Literally sitting here defending like child abuse and acting like it's like a good thing. Children should so, be trapped in homes where they're hideously abused. Yeah, I thought, man, back in my day, if I was to come home and I'm saying, hey, mom and dad, I'm a girl now, they would have beat me within an inch of my life and said, you're still a girl. And if I said yes, they would have done the coup de gras because it's better to be dead than a damn tranny. That's and right. You know what? That's good Christian morals. That's good Jewish morals as well. And you know what? Christian morality, folks. Furthermore, I thank God every day that they did that. I mean, <laughs> wait. No. <laughs> That's not what I meant. Her first week of school, that since, since she identified as a male, she could use the boys' bathroom. School records also indicate bullying, although they don't capture the severity of what Sage eventually told her mom. Boys were following behind her in a group, touching her, threatening her with a knife, violence and rape, and even shoving her up against a hallway wall. <laughs> in August 23rd. Wow, I wonder, what, I wonder where that sentiment comes from. I wonder where the kids learned that kind of hatred and exclusionary bullshit. Probably from the fucking same kind of douchebags that were raising this poor kid. And people like you. Stain. What do you think? A kid getting a trans kid getting bullied for being trans, and you think that somehow your side is the good guy in that situation? <laughs> what if they were just accepted by everybody in school and everybody went on learning? What if that kid wasn't bullied mercilessly at home and school? You starting to get the idea of why this kid might have run away? They're just surrounded by people that hate them for something they have no control over. No, it can't be that. It's gotta be this and trans we're supposed to believe, ideology. And we're also supposed to believe that. We're at where the, that the this kid came out as trans because the school is brainwashing them. And yet the same school that's so pro trans that they're literally taking cisgender people and turning them into trans through sheer ideological propaganda. That very self same school also has roving gangs of anti trans boys 
threatening people with knives for being trans. Like, does that make sense? Does that it, does that version of the narrative hold any sort of water or credibility whatsoever? No. School notes, reports were received from students and teachers that Sage had used a boy's bathroom and encountered hostile boys there. The school counselor met with Sage the next day to direct her to use the nurse's bathroom for safety reasons. Again, they, they, they just they never actually contacted the parents. By the time they did contact the parents, Sage was basically gone. When you have educational institutions that are out. Wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. What that means is when they finally did contact the parents about it, the parents immediately cracked down on this kid and inst instigated a situation in which the kid felt they had no choice but to run away. That's exactly what happened. See, the way that this is like dishonestly framed as if these poor these parents are just trying to save their baby who's been wrestled away from them by this evil leftist ideology of gender swapping. Does Occam's razor no longer apply in conservatard land? It's just like, what makes more sense? That this kid living in a, an environment of constant oppression about their gender identity felt that they had no choice but to run off with the first creep that showed interest in the fucking Discord server they hang out in or whatever the fuck. Or that there's some international cabal trying to convince boys that they're girls and girls that they're boys. And that in, a, in this process, the child's mind is destroyed. <laughs> you know what I mean? And everybody just naturally starts bullying them because that's, it's just, yeah, I so, love the, the, like, the, what? There's this weird insist insistence on like, why weren't the parents told? Why weren't the parents told? Why weren't the parents told? It's probably because the parents would react the way they reacted, right? Exactly. So, like, basically there's two views of the personhood of a kid, which is either, like, the conservative view, which is, like, where they are just, like, the property of their parents and no sort of ex expression of identity beyond what is parentally approved can possibly ever happen or should ever happen. And if the, that kid expresses any sort of, like, alternative identity whatsoever the parents need to be immediately informed so that they can start oppressing that kid and getting them in line no credence paid to the individual rights of that person at all or you have no. the idea that uh, a child is a person that has the ability to like make decisions and stuff and can you know have some some degree of autonomy especially in per as it pertains to like their identity yeah. now obviously like there's a middle ground here you can't just, you know, expect a, a, a teenager to to understand the ways of the world and just have the same autonomy as an adult. But they also shouldn't be chattel property of their parents either. And if you have two virulent homophobes or transphobes and you out a transgender or or or, or gay kid to those parents, that's tantamount to whatever abuse that those parents are going to wreak on that kid. Right, and so, you've now involved yourself in that abuse by being the person that alerted them in the first place. And you've you've basically in, you've basically given it your tacit endorsement. And if you've done that, then you are a supporter of child abuse. And as far as I'm concerned, you should be bludgeoned to death with a fucking pipe. I'm gonna fucking drop the stern talking to pretense. Fuck Ben Shapiro. Fuck anybody who thinks like this. They belong in the fucking trash. Good riddance. Die.